Yo! This man attracts the pot faster than any character you can ever see. Only if he was strong enough to handle them. This is a legitimate question. How strong would Krillin have been if he never stopped training specifically after Cell was defeated? The tactical master that he is. Give us a solar flare times 100. Give us the multi-destructive disc. Who's to say that he couldn't learn every move Roshi ever created? The Mafuba. The lightning shock surprise. Hell, any other myriad of tricks to hold his own in a fight. When I say train, I don't mean Krillin unlocking a brand new transformation that's just gonna end up being bullshit. I'm talking about raw training that if he had done since the beginning, would that have mattered in the series? As far as I'm concerned, when I saw the episode of Dragon Ball Super, where it looked like Krillin had perfect control over his key and kind of had this pseudo aura of Jiren. By Dragon Ball Superhero, Vegeta even remarked that his power isn't that far above me and Kakarot's. The only difference between us is how he uses that power. Krillin's power, if controlled through a focal lens, what could that have done for him? Well, here's my what if. Cell is dead. Android 18 and him hit it off. Krillin realizes that if he wants to be strong enough to protect the love of his life, he cannot stop training. He goes back to Master Roshi, begging to learn more from the master. Roshi, seeing the glimmer in his eyes, said, It's been a long time, but I think you're ready to learn this. Standing up, getting ready to teach him the Mafuba and the Lightning Shock Surprise. Two techniques that can give him an edge against a stronger opponent. Since we have a seven year time skip, oh, we can play around with this so much. Say the first two years is there for him to learn the techniques that Roshi knows. After learning those techniques, he dedicates another year to learn how to master his key control. Then, for the remaining years, once he learned what to do with key control, he gets the level of key control that Jiren has, where he can open his eyes and shoot key punches at such a speed that people would think that you're just shooting air. So, we start the boost saga. Of course, we see Gohan and his antics at school, which then progresses to the world tournament, which then progresses to Majin Buu's awakening. The first thing we see with Krillin is him getting blindsided by Deborah and being turned to stone. In my what if, we would have Krillin not feeling inferior, because it was thanks to this fact that he was ready to retreat and go join his wife, why he was blindsided by Deborah. If he was ready and on guard, if Deborah shot that spit, Krillin would have been ready. Krillin would have had a barrier around his body. With his level of key control, Majin Buu's awakening still needing more power means that the events of Vegeta being tricked, going Majin, and then eventually breaking control of Bobby's control and going for Kakarot, which then releases Majin Buu, will let that all play out the way it usually did. Now, we have Krillin, Gohan, and the Supreme Kai, while Goku is fighting Vegeta. Majin Buu has been awakened. Krillin there on deck. Gohan being amazed at Krillin's raw power. After Majin Buu being awakened, being arrogant of the world, not understanding that there are people with the techniques that could stop him. Techniques like the Mafuba, who in Dragon Ball Super, of course, we've seen Master Roshi, who was far weaker than Frost, use it on Frost. And if it wasn't for the fact that Master Roshi was tucked out from using the Mafuba for multiple times, he would have got Frost. We're gonna say Krillin, thanks to Gohan's distraction, was able to put a jug down, wave his arms, and yell, Evil Containment Wave! Sealing Majin Buu back into the jaw, stopping the evil from being released. Gohan then, going straight for Bobby's neck, and instead of killing him, gives him to the Supreme Kai for the Supreme Kai to throw him to jail. Now, with this jar holding Majin Buu in, the Majin Buu story comes to a sad end. No atonement from Vegeta, no Gotenks being born or Vegito being born, yet we have another time skip to when Lord Beerus awakens. Lord Beerus does everything the movie does, finally gets to Earth, then we get to the fight that happens at the party. Am I gonna try to bullshit you and say that Krillin defeats Lord Beerus? No, 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 I'm not even gonna try. Krillin, same with most of the Z Fighters there, gets cream. Goku with the help of five pure-hearted Saiyans, unlock Super Saiyan God, and we get the antics of the movie. Then we go into the next arc, which gives us the resurrection of Frieza. Now, this one plays out more or less the same. Though, Krillin is able to hold his own better with the grunts, forcing Frieza to get up from his seat and contend with the Z Fighters. Now, Frieza, feeling a little threatened, probably would jump all the way to his final form. Once he jumps to his final form, Goku and Vegeta both have a power to sense and link on, teleporting in, giving us the battle of Goku versus Frieza. So the movie plays out the way it already did. Then we go to our next arc, the Universe 6 Tournament arc, where this time, things will kind of play out a little bit differently. Instead of Piccolo being chosen, we're gonna have our main man grill because Goku can acknowledge that Piccolo, as strong as he is, sadly isn't at the strength that they need to win this tournament. Certainly enough, replacing him with Krillin still doesn't change what happens. Because with Piccolo, he fought for us, lost them because of poison, and then switched with Vegeta. Then the antics of the Universe 6 arc would happen as it does. The Goku Black arc, the antics of that will go as usually as it does. Purely the major reason being it doesn't involve Krillin. For as strong as Krillin may be, his exponential growth cannot match the Saiyans like Goku. 
Cool and Vegeta. And that part is a sad truth. Now, if you want to see a what if of Krillin was born as a Saiyan, now that could be interesting. But that's not the what if we're talking about today. So we go on to the one arc that we know Krillin can definitely hold his own. The Tournament of Power. Instead of seeing the horrible display that he was given, we get Krillin, our boy, fighting off with Android 18. Showing us how far he can go. And if Master Roger can, god damn it, if he can go toe to toe with Juin for like a couple of seconds, Quillen is also going to go and challenge Jiren. Both of them having so much time to focus their key through like a vocal lens. The only difference being is Jiren's key reserve is a bit higher than Krillin's. But Jiren being very shocked that there's another creature out there that has the same dedication as he has. Acknowledges that Krillin was a strong character. Yet, Krillin still loses at the end. No matter how much I want to say by Krillin training would change everything, in Super, the power scaling just goes to the point where even if Krillin did keep his training up, I'm sorry to say, but the truth is, Krillin won't be able to keep up with where the Saiyans are with the God Key. And until we learn a way that a human can unlock God Key, it's sad to say, but Krillin is pretty much done for. Krillin may have the most creative ways of fighting, but the one thing that Dragon Ball at this current time rewards more than creativity is power. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, you guys stay safe and peace.